All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. We just had our first fig of the year. I was pretty excited about that. Uh, it was a Campaneri main crop. So I should say the first main crop fig of the year. And that was an extremely sweet piece of fruit. Um, looking back on the other half that I had and examining it a bit more, I could not believe actually how sweet it was. Um, so super high bricks fruit because it's just been so dry here. And I was actually thinking because it's been so dry, uh, I have been upping my water in the irrigation that we've been given these trees. And I'm actually thinking, I'm expecting the quality be, to be lower this year. And it very well may be lower this year. Uh, at least that's my prediction going forward on not just the young potted trees, but these older in-ground trees. I think the quality will be slightly lower than in, in the past, but we'll find out. We'll see. Um, the in-grounds will be fine. In fact, the in-grounds probably will be the best that they have ever been because of this drought that we've been in. The soil is just so dry and the quality of the fruits that I'm going to ripen on these in-ground trees is going to be insane. Uh, what I wanted to do is talk to you guys today actually about some of the main crop that we have here, uh, evaluating varieties and preliminary evaluations before we actually taste the fruits. This is kind of a good and bad thing. A lot of people will argue that, well, you shouldn't evaluate your fig tree in the beginning because it's going to change. And that is 100% true. I find that a lot of people who do fig tastings um, and they make it into a video and I really think it's admirable. They do exactly what I do. I, I'm happy that they're doing it, but they're unaware, at least in this current moment. I mean, hopefully they'll probably be aware this, this season or in upcoming seasons that the fruits just dramatically change because well, one, they're, their watering isn't honed in really well just yet. Um, and that's really the main, actually, that's really the main reason. People always say it's about the age of the tree. It's not really about the age of the tree. It's really about the watering at the time that this fig has formed. So this really small fig here, when they just form on the branches, right here so as an example and this is a young saint martin air layer so this is still considered a young tree or even even this tree down here it, this is a tree i just bought from uh big bill it was a rooted cutting that he rooted this winter and you can see there's small fruits on it as long as when these fruits are forming here from the beginning you're not really overdoing it with the water you're gonna get good fruit quality no matter how old the tree is, uh, you need to have some level of photosynthesis. You need to have some level of health in the tree. Uh, but I would not say, I would not give a blanket statement that it's just really about age. It's really about the water. And because the trees, when they get older, they fill their pots in better and are not really drowning in water. And they're not uptaking crazy amounts of water. So, that water doesn't get injected into the fruits. Part of that water that is in the soil, if it's you know in an, an overabundance, that goes into the, the fruits themselves and lowers the bricks quality, lowers the quality of the fruits and lowers the bricks. So there's a you know again reasons why this is a bad idea doing this premature evaluation, but you could very easily make a lot of judgments here in a humid climate based on the shape of the fruit and based on the length of the stem and uh based on um you know how many fruits are on the tree uh in relation to you know how easy they set uh was it difficult for the figs to, to set on the branches did they require a lot of light uh, are they further along in their progression? You know, like this Casariani, which has become one of my favorite hardy Chicago types. I'm sorry, this is Norella, excuse me. Uh, this one formed main crop first, and you can see that the main crop looks pretty darn far along compared to 
even some of the figs that really had a head start in the greenhouse and should ripen their fruits relatively around the same time, actually. Um, so you can get an idea of a lot of different things. The earliness of the fruits, the overall shape of the fruits, how well they're going to do in a, you know, a, a humid climate. Um, what the light requirement is. So I've been evaluating all these varieties this whole time. I have not just, this isn't just some new phenomenon that the middle of July I said, okay, let's do this now. Um, I've been making some judgment calls. First off, this fig here, it's called Negrette de Porco Rolls. It's um, a fig my friend uh, Romeo has, has growing that he got from um, some other collector, gave him a number of trees. And this tree is, I've noted, relatively unhealthy. It does and has finally shaken off most of the virus, but it needs some help in terms of the health of the tree. Um, it does have four fruits on it. It should have way more. So it seems a bit bogged down by this virus. We probably should uh, do some hard pruning on it maybe in the future. Maybe I'll plant it in the ground. I don't know. But I do know that evaluating this tree based on its performance this year is a mistake because of this virus the virus is making it behave in a way that is not really how it will behave in the future so this is another kind of misleading point or way that you can kind of stray yourself wrong here on some of your observations what i am observing though is the fruits themselves and these fruits really do remind me a lot of um, like a Borges Sot Noir, Borgioto Nero. Uh, there's many names for this fig. Uh, what's, what's the other ones here? Um, it's probably one of the most popular commercial figs in the world. It's typically a large, flatter black fig that resembles Black Madeira. It has really good commercial potential tends not to split uh my noir de barbantane that i have in the ground is said to be a two week earlier and uh, more split resistant version of borgia Sot noir um but looking at the fruits here on the tree and, and the color of the fruits actually it has this grayish color to them this looks like and the shape it looks like the unripe versions of that particular fig now i won't know for sure until i ripen them and taste them and see them in their full uh you know fully ripe state but at least that's a premature judgment that i'm keeping in the in the back of my mind now could that change yeah so is that a hundred percent true no um but it's at least the thought in the current moment um some other shapes and things that we've been looking at here uh, something that I've been interested in actually is this particular fig. This is called the Retta, which is a Grease de Saint Jean type. I have not really been looking at this tree all that much this year, but I've noted that the shape of the fruits is very classic Grease de Saint Jean. The shape of the leaves, same thing. I have another tree over here that's a Grease de Saint Jean from an um, unknown European source. They grow rather well. They need a lot of light. They tend to grow outwards rather than upwards. So they have a very different growth habit. They have very large leaves. This one here is actually producing doubles. And it seems like on the Retta, it may have a slightly easier time uh, producing fruit buds in lower light conditions. So um, that may be a slight difference between that and this other Grease de St. Jean. Which one tastes better? I don't know. We're going to find out. And I'm excited to find that out. Uh, one other fruit that I've been really impressed with, you guys just ought to pay attention to this fig. It's uh, Sister Madeline's Yellow. The fruit shape on here is fantastic. It's really healthy, this tree. Uh, it produces doubles. And the fruits are very, very tasty. So this is a super underrated fig. Nobody cares about it. Nobody talks about it. I tried this from my friend uh, Karen's tree. She's in New York City. 
I'm not sure if she's still there. My friend Maddie had given her that tree or maybe sold it to her. Um, and Maddie, of course, got it from Charlie Little who found the variety. I, I don't know exactly where Charlie found it, but um, the point is, is that I tried some fruits from Karen's tree and they were fantastic. Really blown away, actually. They were dried on the tree. She brought one, we cut it up into quarters, we ate it, all of us loved it. There's four different people at a gathering at in Princeton that I was at. Now, I decided to get a hold of this tree. So Karen sent me cuttings, I turned it into two different trees, I planted one in the ground. This is the other. And now I'm evaluating this tree and the fruit shape looks fantastic. It's probably going to be a little bit more fatter than I'd like. We really like to see that long slender shape typically with longer stems but a lot of them are, are going to end up being i think an oval now they do swell in that final stage to a slightly different shape than they are now uh but for the most part this is going to be relatively the shape now some of them are a bit fatter than others but it does seem pretty uniform in shape which is great to see because last year the shape was kind of all over the place some of them were a bit squattier and fatter as the tree got more energy it seems like a bit older the shape normalized a bit uh so i'm excited to see if that trend continues on something like that uh what else do we have here i do want to show you really quickly this is really what we're looking for on a fig that, um, you know, really just has the perfect shape. Here's actually a fig here called Salame, which is going to be one of the best figs I have. Look how long the stem is. That's insane. Uh, it has a long stem, a long neck, and a slender body. So when the fig hangs, it sheds that water real easily and doesn't split. Um, I have another Vertolino over here somewhere. Here's Vertolino. Same exact deal with this longer stem and slender body. This is in my top three, this particular fig. It's that good, Vertolino. Now, Salame, I believe, is the same thing. I'm hoping it's not the same thing. There is some pretty good uh, Italian things I've read, different um, websites, people know what they're doing with these varieties. They look the same. I have a feeling they're the same, but the leaf pattern doesn't really match. So we'll find out. I don't, I don't know what's going to end up happening here. Um, but I, nonetheless, I'd rather them not be the same because that just means I have another variety with different genetics that's really, really good for this particular climate. So that's kind of the model citizen of what we're looking for in terms of these varieties here, guys. Uh, I'll show you another one, which is the Moro de Caneva. This is what we all want. We all strive, all the fig varieties should strive to have this shape. Here is a Fico Seco. And you can see that if you have a longer stem slender slender body kind of like the shape of a cigar they're an oval shape and the neck the stem allows them to hang downwards as they ripen here is actually a braba oddly enough the braba doesn't even have a stem to it barely has a stem so braba is actually less conducive or more more conducive to splitting and having problems um, but it still has that oval shape which is um still going to be solid now you have the total opposite thing here with this little ruby where the eye is actually open it's a very flat fig and the eyes point towards the sky when they ripen if the eye the very sensitive part of the fruit is pointing downwards you have less likely chance of splitting the rain and the moisture the dew when it sits on the eye tends to seep into that particular part of the fig it absorbs the water absorbs into the skin and it expands very quickly and when it expands very quickly it splits 
So that's what you want. That's what we're making these preliminary evaluations on the shapes of the fruits. Like this brocolette is kind of meant to be, when I thought of it, was more of like a col de dame replacement. Um, in the sense that it has that really thick, nice texture of the col de dames. Might be a, a lot healthier, easier to grow, you know, just a better choice. But the shape of the fruits is, is weak compared to the golden alms. So the golden alms have those thicker, long necks. They're more elongated figs. They tend to split less. So I'm already kind of making evaluations about these, these things. Like, uh, I, it's going to be nice to taste brocolette unless the fruit really blows me away. And here's the other thing that can change, by the way. Let's say brocolette, as an example, just when it ripens um, and it swells, gets softer, the figs start to droop down and their eye is then pointed down towards the ground. Uh, you know what's notorious for having their eyes pointed towards the sky as they ripen that are really high quality fruits is uh, Italian 258 and Black Madeira. So the both of those are really, again, very tasty fruits. They ripen a lot of fruits, but the eyes, most of them, because the eye is pointed to the sky, they end up splitting. And you really don't get a large harvest from either one of them. Now, I wonder if brocolette's going to be the same thing because it, the shape is wrong. But if the neck can be rather soft, you can see it obviously has a very short stem. But if the neck can be soft enough as it ripens in the early development of it um, to then droop down and avoid a lot of that splitting potentially. So we have to observe the splitting too. We can make observations now about how it's going to split or how often it's going to split. We have to observe how this is all going to work out. One of the figs that just does super well with that, I just mentioned, is Calderona. So Calderona has the wrong shape. It's shaped like a cauldron. Now, I think Pond says it, it's pyroform, which is typically the shape that you want. You don't want them to be round or flat. Your Ciolato is not good. Spherical's bad. We want them to be shaped like ovals, have longer stems, or shaped like a teardrop, like a Celeste, which is the pyroform. This fig also kind of has a pyroform shape, which is the Verdino del Nord. From Tatiana and this one actually I really really am starting to like and appreciate this particular variety uh, I think this one really does deserve quite a place in people's collections we'll see if the flavor can differentiate itself in some way but so far in terms of a lot of the Adriatic type figs this one may have an edge on the others but so does Calderona as I was mentioning is that it it really droops down well when it when it ripens. So even though the eyes are pointed to the sky right now and it has the wrong shape, everything's wrong about it. As it ripens, the neck becomes very, very soft quickly and it droops down in the way that you want. Another fig that really did well for me last year and has the good, has a good shape to it is uh, prosciutto, but this one seems to be a bit of a splitter. But if you're looking at the shape here, it actually looks pretty darn good and is pretty comparable to the Verdino del Nord from Tatiana. I'm almost seeing no differences in terms of the shape right now. But I know they're different figs. They're definitely different, different varieties. Um, but they're both Adriatic type figs. The prosciutto, though, has a really nice drying capability, too, which for me is what separates it. So, you know, that's the other thing. We can preliminary see how it's going to do in terms of the shape and the, the length of the stem. Um, but we don't know how good the drying capabilities are. We don't know how long the hang time is. We don't know how um, you know good it tastes. There's so many things we don't know. But, of course, I'm looking around and making some judgment calls here on some of these varieties you know smith is an example that has the wrong shape to the fruit they can be quite flat and have a round bottom to them but uh they don't really split 
and they deal with the moisture really well. So there are other factors. The skin is another factor to consider. Here's a Celeste. This is a blue Celeste, really just Celeste we should call it, it's called the One. This is for my buddy Bill in uh, Missouri, and uh, he really likes this one. And you can see that it has the perfect teardrop shape, longer stem, looks just like a Celeste. But the nice thing about Celeste, like Smith in a way, I don't really know if you could really classify Smith this way, but certainly Black Celeste, when I've ripened it in the past, it has a pretty much a rain jacket on it. So this, the water does not get absorbed into the skin of the fruit as it ripens and swells. So it doesn't expand very quickly and it doesn't split. The water hits the, the fig and then just drops right off. It kind of just slides right off the, the fruit. Whereas some of the other figs out here, like even Hardy Chicago's kind of total opposite is that the skin really absorbs a lot of things. It's very thin, it doesn't really exist. Uh, it does have, I guess, some ability to shed that rain, but a lot of the hardy Chicago's can absorb rain into their skin and uh, it, it can ruin the flavor. Whereas a lot of this is then preserved in Celeste. And I would argue in, in um, Smith as well. So there's something going on there. Now, here's one for you that's interesting. This is Aishia Black from UC Davis. And looking at the shape of these fruits, they look pretty darn good. These are, again, more pyriform, almost oval-like shape fruits. There's quite a few of them. I really like the health of the trees this year. They ripen mid-season, by the way. No head start. They're really far ahead. Um, really high quality fruit, but for some reason they split. So, but the shape is good. So it'll be interesting, I think, to see what, what's going on here, because the shape is typically very good on these yet they are indeed splitting um so anyway guys that is some of the preliminary kind of stuff i wanted to just mention someone was asking for a little bit of you know st talking about varieties and stuff so i think we did that um some of these varieties here this is verdino giacomo we actually got some fruit buds to form same thing up here with this Mala Vermella, we actually got some fruit buds to form where we were really struggling uh, for the entire season until I brought them all here into the center, piled up all the trees that weren't fruiting. Pretty much every single, every tree I have that is of fruiting age, or at least I would expect them to fruit, is gonna put out fruit, at least of some kind, in these containers, which is insane. Uh, it's that's really really awesome i've almost never gotten 100 percent. it's probably like 99 percent of the varieties are gonna put out fruit and in the past i probably would have said i'm at like 96 percent um yeah some of them are just still too young to actually produce anything like these are just still too weak we just up potted some of these this one here looks a bit yellow it's been like that since I got it, but it actually has some fruit buds in there. So maybe we'll actually get to taste that. I don't know, but we're running out of days. Middle of July, if you're not seeing fruits at this point, you just may not get them. And um, so I'm really hoping that my in-ground trees, a lot of them form their fruits ASAP. And a lot of them were in that hormonal imbalance that we talked about. So anyway. Again, thank you guys here for watching. We'll catch you soon. Check out the blog. Hit that subscribe button. Check out some of the listings I have for sale. Actually, we're selling some trees. Maybe this video came out and some of these trees are for sale. So we'll see you guys for the next one, all right? Take care.